At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, and now you also get automatically entered into the Richard Kane Ferguson Playmat giveaway. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck featuring Nissa, who shakes the world, a 5-mana Planeswalker that starts out at 5 loyalty and has a very powerful Stanic ability, saying whenever we tap a forest for mana, add an additional green mana to our mana pool. So Nissa almost doubles the mana we have access to. Then there's also the plus 1 ability that lets us essentially turn one of our lands into a 3-3 and also untaps that land. So what we'll often end up doing is float a whole bunch of mana, use the plus 1 to untap one of our forests, which can then generate two additional mana, so the plus one also nuts us more mana, and then we can sink all that mana into a number of X spells, we've got Hydroid Crisis, and a two different finales that we'll get to in a second. And then there's also the minus eight ultimate ability, saying we get an emblem that says lands we control have indestructible, and then we also get to search our library for any number of forest cards, put them on the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle our library. And we also have to note that uh, Breeding Pool, being a forest island, also counts as a forest for Nissa's static ability and for the minus eight ultimate ability, so we can search those up as well. So having an early Nissa in play in this deck makes a huge difference. So let's take a look at our entire deck list here, starting out with our one drops, where we've got the full four copies of Lanorals, which helps us ramp as soon as turn one. There's also our Boreal Grazer, which could let us ramp on turn one. I've tried different configurations of ramp creatures, playing a higher number of lands and then playing stuff like our Boreal Grazer, Lanor Scout, and Nissa's Triumph to find more lands to put into play. But I found those cards to be a little bit less consistent than just playing turn one Lanorals. Turn to Elfame Druid, which is another mana ramp creature that adds double green to our mana pool when we cast kicker spells. And then of course that goes nicely alongside Grow from the Ashes, which is a 3 mana ramp spell that searches up a basic land and puts it on the battlefield untapped, is interesting to note. And if we paid the kicker cost of 2 additional mana, we can search our library for 2 basic lands instead and put those on the battlefield untapped, and then we can still use those lands to do additional things. And that's also very relevant if we have a Nissa in play, because then those lands, if we get to Forest for example, we essentially get to add 4 additional mana after casting a kick Grow from the Ashes, so it essentially only costs us one mana to search up two additional lands and if we start with a turn two Alfheim Druid we can play a turn three kick to grow from the ashes which can also lead to very explosive starts and that's the reason why we're playing Alfheim Druid instead of something like Druid of the Cowl which is a slightly better blocker. Then at two mana we also have the full four copies of Bond of Flourishing from War of the Spark. Two mana sorcery that lets us take a look at the top three cards of our library. We can reveal a permanent card from among them and put it into our hand. And the rest goes on the bottom and we also gain three life. So Bond of Flourishing helps us find Nissa. can also find some of our win conditions like Hydroid Crisis and our card draw engine in Tatiova. And the fail case is usually finding a land which isn't too bad. It does sadly miss on finding the finales. So that's one of the drawbacks of Bond of Flourishing over something like Shimmer which would help us dig a little bit deeper and also find the finales, but the three life gain from Bond of Flourishing is definitely worth it. And then we also have the full four copies of Growth Spiral, which is an instant, letting us draw a card and put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield, so essentially helps us ramp as long as we can put a land into play from our hand, which is why we're playing 25 lands, so we can always ensure that we can put lands into play with Growth Spiral, otherwise it's not a very useful card. And then of course we've got the full four copies of Grow from the Ashes, which we can play Kicked for a total of five mana, and plays great alongside Elfame Druid. And now we get to the interesting part of the deck, we've got two copies of Tatiova Banthic Druid, which says whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we gain one life and draw a card, so it plays great alongside a card like Grow from the Ashes or Grow Spiral, since we can put additional lands into play and draw additional cards with Tatiova, and also works great with Nissa's ultimate if we're lucky enough to minus eight Nissa with the Tatiova in play, we get to search up a whole bunch of forests and draw a whole bunch of cards with Tatiova, which is pretty sweet. And thanks to the early ramp cards in the deck, what we'll often try to do is play Tatiova before playing our land for the turn, so we get value immediately, even if the opponent kills Tatiova on the spot. So that's why we'll often sandbag Tatiova until we can play a land alongside her in the same turn. And then we have the full four copies of Nissa, which can also double up as a win condition with the plus one. And then of course once we ultimate Nissa with the minus eight, those lands will become indestructible and very difficult for the opponent to deal with. And now we get to the real finishers in the deck. Two copies of Finale of Devastation, Axe and Double Green for Sorcery, that lets us search our library and graveyard for a creature card with convert mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. Interesting to note, we only get to search up one creature here, even though the wording's a little confusing. And then if X is ten or more, creatures we control 
control get plus x plus x and gain haste until end of turn. So what we're often trying to do is casting Finale of Devastation for x equals 10, which lets us search up our one-off copy of and race forerunners, 8 mana for 7-7 seven, seven with Vigilance, Trample and Haste, and when a forerunner enters the battlefield, other creatures we control get plus 2 plus 2, gain Vigilance and Trample until end of turn, and the Trample is a very important part here, since if we can cast Finale of Devastation for x equals 10, search up and race forerunners, gives our creatures plus 2 plus 2 and Trample as well, which lets us just trample over for all that damage, and we don't need many creatures in play for Finale of Devastation with X equals 10 to be lethal, sometimes just finding an end race Forerunners without any additional creatures in play can be enough to close out the game. So this is how our deck can immediately close out the game as soon as we hit 12 mana, and we only have a one-off copy of end race Forerunners since we don't really want to draw it, we just want to have it in our library or our graveyard somewhere where we can search it up with Finale of Devastation. And then the other finale in the deck is finale of revelation, X and double blue, to let us draw X cards, so pretty straightforward. And then if X is 10 or more, instead shuffle our graveyard into our library, draw X cards, untap up to 5 lands, which is great with a Nissan play, since we essentially get 10 mana back. And then we have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game, and then we also have to exile finale of revelation, to prevent any recursion shenanigans. So finale of revelation can let us draw a stupid amount of cards, especially if we have a Nissan play. And then our final X spell is Hydroid Crisis, which we all know by now X, blue and a green, for 0-0 zero, zero, enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and has Flying and Trample, and when we cast Hydroid Crisis, so even if it gets countered, we still gain half X life and draw half X cards, round it down each time, so this is great in the control matchups where counter spells aren't as effective against the Crisis as our opponent would like it to be. And then we have our one-off End Race Forerunners, which we're hoping not to draw and instead keep in our library to search up with Finale of Devastation, and then the mana base is pretty straightforward, 12 basic force, since we want to maximize Nissa's static ability, and then 5 basic islands, which is the bare minimum we can get away with, and then the full 4 copies of Breeding Pool, which is great alongside Nissa, and 4 copies of Hinterland Harbor, which sadly doesn't count as a forest, but still necessary to fix our mana. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with the keepable hand, we've got our Nissa, which is pretty important. Sadly, we don't have a ton of forests, so the Nissa static could be a little bit underwhelming. But hopefully we draw into some forests here. Opponent with a turn 1 incubation, let's see what they can find. And looks like it's a Merfolk deck with Banthic Biomancer. Alright, let's just play a Tam Breeding Pool for now. And then we have to decide between the Alfame Druid or the Growth Spiral next turn. In some matchups you would want to play the one over the other first. Against Merfolk, where they're not going to kill the Alfame Druid, we might just run it out first, in case we pick up a Grow from the Ashes. Opponent with another Incubation, this time finding Merfolk Misbinder, so that's a scary one. Let's play the Druid. Sometimes you would want to Grow Spiral first, since that makes the Nissa static ability more effective if you've got a ton of Force to put into play. Not really the case here. So next turn we'll have access to 4 mana, which lets us Spiral plus Flourishing, and then the turn after Nissa, and hopefully we can put that to good use. Opponent with a Merfolk Trickster, tapping down the Druid so they can get in 1 damage. Somewhat questionable, since their opponent could have considered using the Trickster on our upkeep to tap down Alfheim Druid to deny 1 mana during our main phase. I guess we can cast a Bond of Flourishing, and then cast a Grow Spiral to instant speed during the opponent's turn, so we have the Druid back as a blocker, potentially. Although I suspect our opponent will play the Mistbinder, and then the Druid's not going to be a very good blocker anyway. And then we have to hope that Nissa survives the attack from the Merfolk, and we get to untap with Nissa to cast maybe a big finale, of, or get the uh, Forerunners out there. Double Deep Root Elite, alright, that's scary. And they still have a Merfolk Mistbinder in hand, so... Or Nissa might not get to untap here. Which is unfortunate, since we kind of need our Nissa to help us... Uh, cast a giant finale of devastation. So opponent gets in for four. That works. Alright, there's a Grove from the Ashes. And a Tatiova. Alright, so we can do some interesting things here. So we can play our Nissa. Whenever playing Nissa, we want to make sure to keep as many force untapped as possible, so we can make more mana once Nissa's in play. So we can play Nissa using our Alpha and Druid for mana. Use a plus one to untap a forest, and we could just keep a forest on defense, 
could also decide to untap an island if we don't want to risk losing a forest. The question here is whether or not we want to cast a growth from the ashes. Um, I think we were better off keeping a 3-3 on defense to help protect our Nissa, in which case we might as well untap an island here. And we get to get in a free attack because our opponent only has two power on defense. And then hope that uh, we can protect our Nissa here somehow. And then next turn we could get access to a ton of mana. Opponent plays a Mistbinder. Two Deep Root Elite triggers. At the very least we're forcing the opponent to send all their Merfolk at Nissa if they want to kill her. Which saves us some life, which can then let us maybe cast our big finale the old-fashioned way. But these Benthic Bindmaster triggers can maybe help the opponent find another Merfolk Mistbinder, which would be pretty devastating. So let's see what our opponent decides. Could always chum block with our islands, if that saves our Nissa, but uh, doesn't look likely. Opponent sends everyone at Nissa, so we can eat the Deep Root Elite. But Nissa still dies, even if we chum the Bindmaster, we still take 7. So there's no way of saving Nissa. But we get to take out a Deep Root Elite on our way out, which is still decent. Alright. Lenor Elves to draw. So I guess we'll start by attacking with our lands. And then we can go Tatiova into Lenor Elves and save the Grow from the Ashes for next turn to go alongside Tatiova. Or we can cast a Kick Grow from the Ashes right now. And then set up for a hard cast and raise four runners, which might be the way to go here. So we'll tap the Druid for two green. Play Kick Grow from the Ashes. Get two forests. And play Lanarals. And then next turn we should have enough to cast and raise four runners. Deep root waters from our opponents. Does get in with a mist binder as well. Our opponent's got one card in hand and one mana, so they can't do much here. Second main phase. So I think we can just take it and then this four runners should be lethal. And we want to make sure to keep the island untapped to get in more damage. And that should be Exaxis. So sadly we lost our Nissa along the way, but we still managed to get there with the hard cast forerunners. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty poor hand, only one ramp creature. And then two copies of Hydroid Crisis. This hand could be okay if we draw another ramp card within the next one or two draw steps. Otherwise it's going to be a little bit slow. I guess we'll try it. Ideally we draw a Grow from the Ashes and Alphine Druid survives. Bond of Flourishing instead. Usually want to play as many forests early as possible in case we draw Nissa. So next turn we can cast double Bond of Flourishing and dig for Nissa. Opponent on Grixis. Thief of Sanity. That's a scary card to face. I guess we'll go with the Bond of Flourishing here. Could cast Hydroid Crisis for two, which can technically block the Thief of Sanity, although it's likely gonna get removed. But maybe that's still worth it. Otherwise we can just play some more ramp creatures here and then play a bigger crisis next turn which can actually profitably block the thief and maybe survive a burn spell. Yeah, I think we'll let our opponent hit us once with the Thief of Sanity here. Bond finds Nissa. Play Lanor Elves. Pass a turn. Mills over Forest and a uh, Grow from the Ashes. Would be pretty awkward if our opponent steals or entries Forerunners and then we cast a finale for 10, looking for the Forerunners and don't find it. It's gonna be 4 mana. Opponent says go. So they're likely keeping up a counterspell for Nissa, so now might be a good time to cast a Hydroid Crisis instead. So we can cast one for X equals 4. Seems good. Alright, opponent just has a Chemister's Inside instead. So we do have a blocker for the Thief, let's see how they deal with it. And if they cast a removal spell, that's 
relatively expensive, then we can maybe resolve our Nissa. It's gonna be a bedevil. Alright, so we do get to cast Nissa here. She might not get to stick around for long, but so be it. Alright, so we can go Nissa using our two mana elves. And then we still have access to quite a bit of mana. Breeding pool also pretty useful here as one of our lands we can play. Untap our forests. Play Breeding Pool. And then I'm not opposed to casting another Crisis as a blocker for the Thief here. It's another Crisis for X equals 4. It's just going to be an Angrass Rampage making a sack Nissa. Too bad. And a Ritual of Soot killing everything. Well, that was quite a setback since we also lost a land in the process. Pona still has an Ascanta in play, two cards in hand and the two cards they stole from the Thief. We did pick up another Hydroid Crisis at least. So let's lead with the Growth Spiral here. Put Forest in play. Cast Bond of Flourishing. Find Alfheim Druids. Put that Forerunner on the bottom. And then run out Alfheim Druid instead of Lanner Elves. Alright, so next turn we can hopefully play a big Crisis and find more action. I think we'll discard the Lanner Elves at this point. Ooh, and a Thought Erasure, that's too bad. That was a good turn for Thought Erasure. Tatiova was a nice pickup though. But Nicol Bolas is gonna transform this turn. And that can also finish off for Tatiova if they want to, or just draw them more cards. So it's not looking great here, her opponent had a very good start with enough interaction to keep us off balance and deal with our planeswalkers and most of our mana production as well. And I also stripped away our payoff card. Let's see what they do. Opponent cast Finale of Devastation, X equals 4. Gets Rekindling Phoenix. Fair enough. I think we still play the forest even though they know about islands, just so we have more mana in case of a Nissa. There's Nissa, although I guess we aren't doing much with the mana at the moment. So we might want to save Nissa until we can play her and then cast a big X spell in the same turn. Which makes sense. So let's pass. And then, uh, yeah, we gotta hope to find our second copy of Finale. Maybe our blue Finale to draw a bunch of cards or another Crisis, although we've gone through most copies. Opponent found a Nissa. Summit becomes a 3 3. And alright, there's a Crisis, so. That gives us hope. Let's play for a strong card. And then try and play Nissa here. Hope their last card is not a counterspell. Alright, just an Oscanta activation. Finds Ionize, that's okay. Right, let's cast the uh, biggest crisis we can here. So if this were a final of devastation, the game would be over, just as a side note. But instead it's just a hydroid crisis. Alright, no attacks. The problem now is that our opponent has an Ionize in hand, so they can counter any future finales we play. Nicol Bolas Dragon God can kill our Crisis. Minions. 
and they still get to keep up with their counter spell here so now it's going to be very difficult to win since we essentially need to draw two must counter cards don't have many of those left in the deck so yeah it was a close game our opponent had pretty ideal draw but we still had a small window where if we cast a uh, finale of devastation for 10 the game would have been over so it just goes to show that our deck can be pretty resilient as well opponent goes after nissa Okay, grow from the ashes looks good with the Tatiova in play, and so do these grow spirals. So we will get to draw quite a few cards. All right, let's find some basics. Draw some cards, and I'm not gonna play Nissa again until we find a payoff card we want to play in the same turn. Let's put some blue mana in place so we can cast more growth spirals here. Alright, there's a final of Revelation. So next turn we can go for that one. Play more growth spirals for now. We've drawn most of our deck by now. Play another forest. Pawn the Flourishing. Finds Islands. Finale of Revelation would also shuffle our graveyard back, so that's a way to play a longer game instead of risking decking. Draw another card. Play another Alphim Druid. Alright. So we've got all the mana in the world. There's a small chance our opponent counters a Nyssa, and then the Finale of Revelation resolves. Although it's not looking too likely. Skanta gets activated. But her opponent misses this time. Maybe found some creatures along the way. I'll happily get rid of a land. Enter God Eternals, killing Tatiova. Mills of Foreigners, as well as our other Finale of Revelation, so... At this point, if they counter the final of Revelation, I don't think we have a way to win. So we gotta hope they counter the Nissa instead. The Which they might. We'll see. They could have two counter spells in hand for all we know. Let's lead with Nissa. And our opponent lets her resolve, so they didn't fall for our trap, sadly. So we basically have infinite mana, but nothing to do with it. So what we can try to do is maybe make our opponent think that they don't want to counter the finale, when in reality that's the card they do want to counter. So let's untap Breeding Pool. Make some more mana. And we just want to cast finale for X equals 10 here. And then hope uh, they don't counter it. Since we still have a lot of mana, so if we had another finale in hand that could maybe kill them, they would let this resolve, but no, our opponent uh, goes for the Ionize. So we tried, but our opponent played it well and kept her counterspell for the right card. So we'll get rid of the harbor. Thought Erasure finds Growth from the Ashes. But in the remaining cards, I don't think we have anything uh, that does much. Since our two blue finales are gone, our opponent cast Final of Devastation of Thief of Sanity. And uh, I guess we still have one green finale left in the deck. Since our opponent cast one, but the other one did not see the light of day yet. And uh, Green Finale can find a Foreigners out of the graveyard. So I guess that's our last hope here, top decking the Green Finale, but it has to happen right now. Could have been a reason to cast a Grow from the Ashes last turn in case we had any basic lands left to maybe thin out the deck, but we also know the bottom two cards that we don't necessarily want to draw. We'll see here if we draw Green Finale and our opponent doesn't have a counterspell. 
I guess they would still be pretty dead here. Opponent transforms Nicol Bolas. So they are tapped out. Maybe they didn't mean to. Our opponent should get back the Forerunners. Maybe they should have done that to just kill us on the spot with uh, creatures add in play. Opponent's gonna draw two. Sadly, we didn't draw the green finale to punish them here. But yeah, if our opponent reanimates our Forerunners with Nicol Bolas, then we can't find it with our green finale. So we actually still had a chance here, despite being super far behind, to win this game, which is crazy. All right, GG's, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a uh, solid hand, turn two Elfheim Druid, hopefully turn three Kick Grow from the Ashes. And uh, two Breeding Pools, so we've got our blue mana, but we also have a bunch of forests in case of Nyssa. Opponent with a turn one Hunted Witness, that one we can block, and we picked up Nyssa. All right, so really need a land next turn. Because if we hit a land, then we can go grow into Nyssa, into maybe a big finale, and just close out the game on turn 5. Oof, that was a brick. It's too bad. So instead we have to go Bond of Flourishing, find a land, and then play another Alphame Druid. Find an island. Good enough for now. So yeah, we were on the play with the turn 2 Alphame Druid, turn 3 Grow from the Ashes, but we couldn't find a third land. And that might cost us big time here against the White Weenie deck. Because uh, the sooner we get Nissa in play, the more likely she is to survive. As soon as we give the opponents an extra turn, they'll be able to play more creatures to pressure our Planeswalker. So we fall to 15. I guess we go for it and we can keep a... Elf and Druid back as a chum blocker as well. And then I'm going to animate a basic island instead of a breeding pool, since the breeding pool is more valuable in, in case it dies. And we don't need the extra mana right now. We could untap breeding pool and then cast a Grow from the Ashes Unkicked. I don't think that's something we want to do. So I'll just go with this for now. And I guess we might as well get in there, since they're unlikely to block with Banalish Marshal. Alright. Let's hope Nissa survives somehow, and then next turn we can make something happen. Although with only two basic forces in play, it's not even such an amazing Nissa turn. This looks like maybe a Conclave Tribunal is happening. Alright, there's a Conclave Tribunal. And they're gonna get rid of Nyssa. They were maybe considering getting rid of the land, but Tribunal says exile no land permanent, so they couldn't get rid of the land. Another Nyssa of the top is useful, but our opponent's got such a board presence now that there's no way we can keep Nyssa alive. I guess we'll still play the Nyssa here. Animator Islands. Say go. No good attacks into the Snubhorn. Alright, if our opponent's got nothing left, then uh, maybe we can do something. Gideon's definitely not nothing. So let's see what they do here. Makes Sentry indestructible. Alright, just sends two creatures at Nyssa, so if we jump with a land we can still save her, which seems worth it here. And then we're kind of hoping to draw into a forest to get two more mana. Alright, there's a forest, so how much mana can we make? It's not an insane amount, but might be enough to do something useful. Let's play Kick Grow from the Ashes, and actually Kick Grow from the Ashes using Elfin Roots saves us 2 mana, so we might actually be able to cast Devastation for 10 here. So let's cast this with Kicker. Search up 2 more forests.
Use Nisato on top. So we can cast finally for X equals 10. But I don't think it's enough to kill our opponent on the spots. Since they have quite a few blockers back. But maybe it forces them into some awkward chum blocks. And then they don't have lethal on the way back. Alright, opponent chumps with those, so that happens. Opponent's down to two. And yeah, I don't think they can kill us here, unless they drew a removal spell for the foreigners. Legion's Landing's a good one. Do have to watch out for Gideon's minus six next turn. Opponent just has to pass a turn. Alright, well, we're definitely doing it here. Let's make as much mana as possible and cast a finale for 10, I guess. Can play another kicked grow from the ashes first. So finale for 11. And untap a bunch of lands. Now we already have the Andres Foreigners in play. So we can search that up with finale of devastation, but we can just cast a finale of devastation to pump our team, which might be enough here. So let's see. Our creatures also gain haste, so putting more creatures into play could be beneficial. Let's see how much mana we're working with here. Can also cast another finale for 10. I guess that's worth it here, since we get to untap our lands anyway. All right. Let's make some more mana. And yeah, I guess we'll just cast Final of Devastation for 10. And get a Tatiova, why not? And attack all other opponents and hope this is enough. After missing our third land drop, we still managed to crawl back into it, thanks to Nissa providing such a mana advantage. Sweet, on to the next one. On the draw with a keepable hand. We're missing Nissa, but otherwise we've got a nice early ramp start. Facing a godless shrine. Well, hopefully it's no control deck with sweepers, because we kind of rely on these early Lanor Elves to survive here. So Crime of the Carnarium would be pretty backbreaking here. But we kind of have to run into it. Alright, no double black. It's just gonna be a blood letter. Alright, interesting. We did not run out the breeding pool last turn. We could have, so we had access to finale, but I think we wanted to run out the crisis first anyway. Um, so I guess we'll play the island for now. Don't have any force left in hand in case we top deck Nissa. And then play crisis for four, which also happens to block the blood letter pretty well. And then next turn we can maybe play a big finale for X equals 5, which hopefully draws us into Nissa and another payoff card. Mavern Fane, fair enough, so we're putting some vampires here. Do get to block the blood ladder at least. Alright, more lands, I think it's worth it to shock here in case of a Nissa in the future. Play this for 5. Alright, there's Nissa and a final of Devastation, so... No attacks, discard some islands. And then we just need our Nissa to survive for one turn cycle. 
spawn of mayhem. All right, that's a big scary demon. So we want to tap all our mana producers before tapping our forests. Play Nissa. Gross Barrel. Ooh, Tatiova's a nice one. And we can actually play Tatiova right now. Play Forest, draw a card. And I guess we'll go with the Alfheim Druid over Bone of Flourishing. Alright, hopefully Nissa survives a turn here. And this finale of devastation can devastate our opponent. Plenty of creatures in play, so it's definitely gonna be lethal. Sanctum Seeker, that's fine, doesn't deal damage to our planeswalkers. Alright, let's go for it. Grow from the ashes, can basically play that for free. Eh, why not? Get our Tatiova value. Untap of forests. And I'm just gonna play this for x equals 10 and uh, that should be enough here. Get the forerunners. And smash. Alright, not bad. We maybe didn't face a tier 1 deck there, but still pretty satisfying. Alright, that's gonna do it for today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.